long before the concept of beautiful babies created in the laboratory became a subject of science fiction. Inbreeding in royal families was seen as a way to ensure genetic purity. Mixed marriages ensured that no filthy blood would taint the pure aristocratic bloodline. It would seem that what could go wrong? Well, lots of things. Congenital defects caused by inbreeding were a frequent phenomenon in royal families. From Russia to Portugal and even in ancient Egypt, where the practice of intermarriage between siblings was considered natural behavior. Hoping that a marriage with relatives would be stronger than with an outsider of different blood, royalty completely forgot that the homogeneity of blood would cause the whole body to weaken. Today let's talk about the results of such marriages and the mutation of royal families. Before we begin don't forget to subscribe. This is learning the world. Let's go. The victim of inbreeding, Charles II, nicknamed Enchanted, received one of the most famous mutations of the time. He had what is known as a Habsburg jaw or Habsburg lip. This deformity was characterized by a huge tongue with a crooked bite, a protruding lower jaw, and a thick lower lip. Technically, this deformity is known as mandibular pragmatism. His tongue made it difficult to chew and caused excessive salivation. King was also developmentally delayed. He was fed until he was five years old and never received any education. He was also impotent, so when the king died in 1700, his inability to procreate ended the Habsburgs' power over the Spanish crown. The Habsburg dynasty had been intermarrying relatives for so long that one of Charles II's ancestors, Juan of the Insane, appeared 14 times in his genealogical tree. King Tutankhamun received a skull deformity because of a sibling marriage. Even though he inherited the title of the golden boy pharaoh of ancient Egypt, DNA analysis of King Tutankhamun's mummified corpse shows that this ruler of Egypt was in fact genetically abnormal. The reason was the Egyptian royal tradition of marriage between brothers and sisters. King Tutankhamun ascended to the throne at age 9 and only lived to be 19. He most likely had a cleft lip, clubfoot, and scoliosis. On top of that, he had an elongated, deformed skull. The Egyptian pharaohs revered sibling marriages, influenced by the legend that the god Osiris married his sister Isidai in order to maintain a pure lineage. There were even cases of marriages to a great-niece defined as when a man marries a girl who was a descendant of his brother or sister. King George III of England, whose reign was famously marked by the defeat of the American Revolution, probably had a genetic disorder that affected more his mind than his body. He is thought to have suffered from porphyria, a disease that turned his urine bluish-purple and caused him to have bouts of insanity. But it was also thought to be caused by the king's bipolar disorder. George III regularly left his throne for seclusion at Kew Palace. Later in life he was prone to hallucinations and was often subjected to rather extreme treatments, including straitjackets, leeches, and ice baths to help calm him down. Modern medical research shows that porphyria was common in the noble Hanoverian dynasty, which actually belonged to King George III. He spent the last decades of his reign on the run and eventually lost his sight and hearing. The mentally unstable Queen Mary I was married to her uncle. Known as Mary the Insane, she was subject to delusional seizures and religious obsessions. Mary spent much of her time in seclusion, but her howls could be heard throughout the royal estate. Her grip on sanity was so weak that in 1799 her son John became unofficial ruler while she remained titled queen. Eventually, during the Napoleonic Wars, the family fled to Brazil and Mary was the first to die in a convent. Juana of Castile's hereditary madness was exacerbated by the death of her husband. Juana of Castile was the older sister of Catherine of Castile, the first wife of Henry VIII. Juana did not initially intend to inherit the throne of Castile and Aragon, a kingdom that would be united to create a link to the Spanish Empire. When she outlived several siblings she eventually accepted the burden of the crown. This would not have been a problem if she had been a competent and capable ruler, but it was exacerbated by her mental state, which was slightly impaired. Though that's putting it mildly. She was madly in love with her husband known in history as Philip the Beautiful. Unfortunately, their love story was not a happy one. He cheated on her several times before leaving at an early age, leaving her an inconsolable widow. It was a huge blow to her. From the pain of the loss, she lost her mind to the point that she was removed from power and spent the rest of her days mourning the remains of her husband. 
Her ancestors, members of the extinct royal house of Trastamar, married off members of their family for generations, and it is likely that this tendency was the main cause of Juana's mental instability. The family of King Ludwig II of Bavaria had long been mad, and he had paid the price. Like his cousin the Empress of Austria, King Ludwig II of Bavaria belonged to the old Wittelsbach dynasty. There had been mixed marriages in the family for many generations, and the consequences of this close kinship left their mark on the family members. Ludwig was known for being completely detached from reality and preferred to live in his fantasies, which would have been fine if he had not been a king with his own responsibilities. While he was building castles and sailing in swan-shaped boats, the Bavarian government was tearing its hair out over the shortcomings and profligacy of its king. Eventually Ludwig was dethroned and in a rather sad way. The day after he left the throne, his body was found by the very lake where he had sailed his beautiful swan-shaped boats. Queen Victoria, known as the matriarch of European royalty, suffered from hemophilia, a blood clotting disorder. Although she managed to avoid the serious side effects of the disease throughout her long life, her ancestors were much less fortunate. Hemophilia is usually acquired by women through the genes of both parents, and has nothing to do with the fact that Queen Victoria was married to her cousin Prince Albert. However, historians debate whether the Queen's father Edward Augustus was in fact her biological father. Ferdinand I of Austria had many mental and physical problems, but he ruled for 13 years. Emperor Franz II of Austria married his cousin Maria Theresa, but their son paid a rather high price for the closeness of blood. Ferdinand I was born in 1793, with hydrocephalus of the head, fluid retention and high blood pressure, which seriously challenged his intelligence and motor skills. He also had a Habsburg jaw and tongue too big for his bite, a body too small for his head and on top of that he suffered from epilepsy. Despite his infirmities he ruled from 1835 to 1848. Cleopatra was probably overweight, as was the rest of her family. While Cleopatra is known to popular culture for her slender figure and stunning beauty, she probably was not. In particular, archaeologists believe that Cleopatra was overweight and her family was to blame. The Ptolemaic dynasty, where Cleopatra was from, regularly practiced incest. Obesity in her family was hereditary and incest made it worse. In addition, many scholars believe that she and her brother and sister were not as beautiful as we imagine. Princess Nahianina lost her child to incest. The princess of Hawaii had been in love with her brother King Kamehameha III since she was a child. When she tried to marry him, Christian missionaries loudly opposed the union. They were never married, but that did not stop them from conceiving a child. Unfortunately from the complications that many believed were related to incest, the child lived only a few hours. Nahianina never recovered from the child's death and in the year 1836, rather afterwards, died. A quirk of kings is a quirk of kings. That's it for me. Subscribe to the channel. Goodbye everyone.